my precious God and Father, we're so thankful today for the bountiful blessings that you extend to us. Thank you, Lord, for the great price that you paid for us at Calvary. Lord, bearing upon your body the stripes for our healing, shedding your precious blood, Lord, that our sins may be washed away. We do thank you and praise you, Lord, for that great price. And we're thankful, Lord, to know that you respond to those that try to live according to your word. Lord, that you will respond on their behalf. Lord, and I believe that we as individuals, if we allow the Spirit of God to move in our hearts and our lives, the Spirit of the Lord will check us before we're involved in something that is not right. We ask you, O oh Lord, that you would help us to become more sensitive to your word, more sensitive to the Spirit of God. Lord, that we would live a life on this earth that would be pleasing unto you. Lord, one that would be an example for others to follow. But we realize, Lord, we're still human beings, and we want to follow someone that needs to be Jesus Christ and the example that he gave us in his word. We, oh Lord, we ask God that you administer to each and every family that is represented here today and those that attend our church. We ask, Lord, that you remember Brother Bill's family today. Lord, he set an example for those in his family to follow. He was instrumental in getting this church built. He walked the property and claimed it for Jesus Christ. And then whenever they applied for the loan and whatever they were to get it. And as a result, this church is built here. He's done a great deal of work, Lord, for the church. I well, know, God, that you would bless him for the work that he has done, the efforts he has put forth. But, Lord, we know that you're no respecter of persons, and you will also bless your children, those who have followed you, and those who live according to your word. We have hope, Lord, that when we pass through this life, we know exactly where we're going. We're so thankful, Lord, for the assurance that we can have in our hearts and life, Lord, with no doubt to know that when we pass through this life, we're going to be with our Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord, that you grant the request of those that was given in today, those that are sick and afflicted, those that are having financial needs, and most of all, those that have spiritual needs, Lord. We ask God that you would help us, Lord, to fall on our faces before you, repent of our sins, O oh God, claim victory in Jesus' name, and get up, Lord, from our prayer, God, and be witness for, witnesses for the Lord in this world in which we live. We realize, Lord, that we have, all of us have family members that are unsaved. We have neighbors that are unsaved. But, Lord, you are the Savior of the world. As many as call upon your holy name, Lord, you have never turned anyone down. Yes. And we're so thankful today, O oh Lord, that you would minister to our needs spiritually, physically, and materially, Lord, and we're looking unto you, the offering, the finish of our faith, doing it all good and perfect gift come for you. Bless Brother Ray, Lord, as he breaks the bread of life this morning in Sunday school class. We ask, Lord, you give the anointing upon our pastor as he brings the word this morning. And help us, O oh God, to extend ourselves in worship, for you certainly work worthy of all the praise, the honor, and the glory that can come from our innermost beings. Pray that you would save someone, Lord. And when we leave here today, we can surely it has been good to have been in the house of the Lord. Yes. Your precious holy name, we pray and ask these blessing. Amen. 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 All right, thank you, Brother Tommy. Everybody here this morning? Amen. 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 Can't think of any other place I'd rather be on Sunday morning than right here. Amen. Sunday school. That's right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, we can. Hot or cold or whatever it is. Place to be on Sunday morning, in my opinion. He's working for a company and he had a uh, <clears throat> meeting one about they wanted everybody to start working on Sunday and try to get the job done faster. Mm -hmm. You know, one time I said, Well, I said, I'm sorry, I, you know, I was the foreman for the plumbing company. I said, Well, you know, we're not going to be here. He said, Why not? I said, Because it's Sunday. I said, I'll be in church. And I said, I highly recommend it. Every one of you guys at this table today do the very same thing. Instead of coming to work, go to church. Give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some honor. That's right. But, uh, of course, you know, no, we got to work. We've got to you know, make that money. I wish everybody would close on Sunday at work. <laughs> really. That, I mean, Chick-fil-A is an example. Yep, Lord bless them. I mean, no every time you go by all those places, they are loaded with cars. <laughs> Sunday's the only time I have a time to eat Chick Fil A, and so was... <laughs> <laughs> every time I go by, I'm like, oh, it's Sunday. Never mind. They're going to come when everybody will be in the. Uh, really, it's a, say. It really is an exciting It really is. Yeah. Uh, the day will come when one day everybody will be in church, so to speak, on the. Uh, Sunday because everything be closed except for the uh, except for the church. Mm -hmm. Except for the uh, you know, in, the, in the new creation. And it'll be a whole lot different than what they are today. You don't have any unsaved people there either, brother. That's right. Mm -hmm. We'll be praying for aches and pains and sorrows and deaths and that kind of a thing and uh, it'll all be uh, it'll be all good. Nothing but blessing after blessing after blessing. Mm -hmm. for, for the longest of time. So what are we talking about here today about the new creation? We've been talking about, uh, mostly about, coming from Genesis. <clears throat> and now we're going all the way to the back of the, the, back of the book, into Revelation. We'll be studying that motion out of Revelation today. Somebody like to read the key verse for today, Revelation 21 and 3? I heard it. Go ahead. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Amen. That and many other scriptures in Revelation that tells us that heaven is not going to be a quiet place. Now they're in a sanctuary on Sunday morning. We, you know, a lot of people are doing things and are praising the Lord, making some noise and that kind of thing. Well, I can tell you, in heaven, will be a whole lot of noise going on. There's Amen. scripture after scripture where it says the, the elders, the angels, the beasts are shouting and raising their voice with a loud voice and a great voice and just giving praise and honor uh, to the Lord. And we uh, will be a part of that. Now, the world we live in today is a lot different than what it uh, intended to be at the beginning, especially from the uh, Garden of Eden. When God created, He said it was very good. And everything was very good. Of course, you know, mankind let sin in and it contaminated everything. And it's nowhere near the way it used to be or the way that uh, God would like for it to be. But thanks be to the Lord, thanks be to the Lord. That one day things are going to change. It's not going to be this uh, corruptible world that we're in today. The new creation will be a whole, uh, whole got brand a lot new. Going on now. Mm. Yeah, it won't be corrupt. It won't be marred by sin and the consequences of. You probably have some things. I'm, I know everybody has in the course of life where you we say uh, out with the uh, old and in with the new. Mm -hmm. When things get worn out, you know, and you, you can't use them anymore. Don't use them. Most of you cast them to the side and you you get something new to replace it. Well, God's going to do that. This old world's going to get worn out. And, uh, time's going to come and He's going to replace it with something new. And it's going to be gone and be gone and forgotten. And we'll have a brand new place. And we live in a uh, broken world, but for us, the time's going to come when uh, this broken world's not going to matter to us anymore. We won't even remember this broken world. We are. Uh, we'll God will make a new heaven new. and a new earth where there will be no sin or sorrow. That's right. That's a true truth. Yep, and God uh, <laughs> desires that everybody be a part of that, but you know, a lot of people are going to choose not to, and it's our choice. So we've got a lot to look forward to. A big question in people's minds today across the world about, you know, uh, what happens when we die? Where are we going? Is there really a heaven and a hell, or that's just something, uh, a fairy tale, or a figment of somebody's imagination, or, uh, you know, I can't really stand here and tell you that, you know, I've been there and done that. Uh, <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. I'm still here. You know, I haven't been to heaven. Haven't been to hell. Not, not uh, li literally. But I've been in places where I, 
I felt like I was blessed and I was in heaven. And I've been in places where it felt the other way around, where I was so cursed and felt like I was going through hell. Uh, but to actually be there and say I've been there and done that, I can't. But I believe with all of my heart, all of my being, that the day's going to come when all the believers are going to be in heaven. They're going to be in this new creation. And all the non-believers are not. They're going to be somewhere else where they don't want to be. Uh, but uh, that's a choice we all have to make. God doesn't actually send somebody. It might be burning. <laughs> we, uh, we make that choice while we're here. Yeah, it's going to be a little hot. Uh, some block ain't going to do you no good. No way. Or a fan. It's going to be uh, a whole different hot here. I can't go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go to hell. I won't make it. <laughs> but you know, while we're here, we're... Uh, we're on a journey, we're on a destination. We're on, it's like a road trip. You know, people get excited about a road trip. They're going somewhere and they're glad when they get there because of all the fun and joy they're going to have. Well, we're on a road trip. And we're, you know, we're, we're traveling, we're traveling, we're traveling. The day's going to come when we get to where we're our destination. And when we get there, it's going to be, you know, we're going to be happy. We're really going to enjoy ourselves. And the thing about it is we can enjoy ourselves today mm -hmm. uh, on our road trip. It doesn't have to be a burden. It can be, uh, there's plenty of joys and pleasures along the way. We just got to seek them out and uh, make that choice to enjoy what we have. Stop and smell the roses, so to speak. I went to a funeral once and it was talking about, you know, you have a, um, a birthday and you have a date that you die and it, you have a dash in between. What do you do with that dash? That, that, you know what I mean? Like that dash is your life. What do you do with that, that journey to this date from that, you know, from that date to this date? That's what you that's what your story is. You know what I mean? You want your story to say, I did nothing. I didn't live life to the fullest. I didn't, you know, I didn't praise God through the whole thing. I didn't enjoy his blessings. Or do you want to say, you know, I rode the I rode the roller coaster of life and I, I went, you know, I enjoyed everything that God gave me and, you know, that kind of thing. So, I don't know. I always think about that dash. Hopefully, you know, it'll make a difference, and not only in our own life, but in somebody else's life as well along the way. Mm -hmm. A good difference, that is. I'm going to start reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. And I'm going to read out just that one verse, uh, chapter 1, that says, to John talking, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. It's all gone. Heaven's gone. Earth is gone, sea is gone, everything's gone. Just blank, void, empty. And God's going to bring something down from heaven to uh, fill it up. A lot of people have read the, uh, especially Christians, they say, well, I read it back in the book and I see that we win. You know? <laughs> and we do win. Uh, because there's a lot in between, like Kelly was saying, between the beginning and the end. Genesis and Revelation. It's just full of, uh, full of stuff we need to you know, keep our mind uh, on as well. Is, and, there, and the world we live in today, we see all the stuff that's going on, the bad stuff. I mean, there's so much of it. Sometimes it can be discouraging uh, to us when we hear it on TV, radio. We see it in you know, our family's lives or in the world around us. It can be a, a heartbreaking sort of speak for things to take place. Mm -hmm. But uh, God's got a better plan for us. Like the road trip we're on. We may see a lot of highway construction, a lot of breakdowns, a lot of things along the way on that road trip we're on, but God's got a destination for us to get to. In spite of all the things we'll pass, all the bumps and potholes and that kind of thing in the road on, on the way, uh, not, none of that's going to be there when we get to our destination. And we'll be glad that we, uh, we got there. And we'll be thanking the Lord for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody read 2 Peter 3 and 10. 2 Peter 3 10. Books back. But the, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And they will come and all of a sudden, stuff, things are going to change quickly. That things are going to be. We talked about the other week about how, you know, the possibility that uh, nuclear blast and nuclear bombs and all that could 
to be a part of it. It was going to destroy the earth with a fervent heat. A nuclear bomb gets over 100 million degrees at its core, and it burns, burns stuff up pretty quick. And then the core of the earth is like, I don't know, 10,000 degrees or something like that, uh, the liquid part in the core. But I read about it, it says a great noise uh, at the end. I believe there was a great noise in the beginning when God created it. You've heard of the Big Bang Theory, where they, they believe it was a little small uh, matter, and then all of a sudden it just blew up, exploded with uh, fervent heat and scattered and created the universe, and everything started to evolve. This, this theory became around in called the Big Bang Theory in 1912. Well, in 1948, they came up with another one called the Steady State Theory, whereas they believe that uh, <clears throat> the stars and the planets, they, they're constantly moving away from the Earth. And they get so far away and you can't see them anymore, a new star is born so you can see it. And it just keeps on growing and growing and growing, expanding, expanding, expanding. And then in 1922 uh, and 24, they had a, uh, called the Oscillating Universe Theory. And they believe in a little book of these that it started out as a big bang and everything's constantly expanding. But <laughs> the expansion is only going to go so far. And it's going to come to the end of the universe and it's going to stop and it's going to turn around and start reversing. And everything that exists is going to collapse on itself. And it's called the big crunch where everything collapses. Everything is destroyed. goes back to a little small piece of matter and then it starts all over again. Then it bang, starts all over again. Then it's the steady state. Goes out, reaches the end, turns around and comes back. And just keeps going, oscillating, going back and forth, back and forth. That's the three main theories of uh, in science, in the world of science today. Sound like, right? sound like a good TV show, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, time and warps and time maps. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I believe in the Big Bang Theory and speaking where when God spoke, bang, a Big Bang, and it just happened. Like I said, there's going to be a great noise when the elements are going to melt. Heaven's going to pass away and the earth's going to pass away. The great noise comes from God. He's going to make all the difference in the world. But when we get that new heaven and new, that new earth, it would be, uh, that'd be awesome. Somebody read Revelation 21, 2 through 8. Revelation 21, 2 through 8. No time you got? And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You say just 2 and? 2 through 8. Oh, okay. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, and he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is authors, authors of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit the things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful... The fearful and unbelieving and the uh, abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and the all liars shall have their part in the, the lake which burneth with fire and brimstones, which is the second death. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's what the... You see the holy city come down, what, you know, what we're all looking for. Mm -hmm. and I would imagine that when we get there, the blessings that we receive will be just you know beyond our imagination. Of what heaven's going to look like and the things that are taking place while we're there. But, uh, we'll be nothing like what we're you know what we're used to. We've been here for you know uh, 
two years, we've been here for you know 120 years or whatever. It's going to be a, a big difference. And then of course those who are not following Christ, who don't believe in Christ, and not saved, uh, you know, they get the, uh, the misfortune of enjoying, the, not to say enjoying, but the misfortune of experiencing the lake of fire, which might be a pleasant place. Hmm. John described the heaven in a you know, bit of a detail there about how it's uh, existence from all sin and corruption and uh, none of that will be there. None of them will be allowed in heaven. So anybody that really enjoys that type of a thing, uh, heaven's not going to be their home because none of that's going to be there. They'll go with their, uh, what they want to enjoy, unrighteousness. That's what they'll be experiencing. And they'll be experiencing away from the presence of God. There's no corruption allowed in, in heaven. we got a brief taste of... Uh, when, when Jesus was on the earth, he gave us a brief, a brief taste of what it's going to be like uh, to be in the presence of God. That's why so many people follow him. But like that, he promised to always be with us and never forsake us. So when we get to heaven, uh, you know, the Lord will be there with us in our midst. We won't be going to a temple anymore or to a church uh, because the uh, church will be right there 24-7. And God will be a part of us. And no more sorrow, no more pain, no more death, no more dying, uh, no more you know problems with my back, problems with my hip, problems with this, problems with that. Mm -hmm. I'll, be, uh, I'll be jumping for joy. Yes. I'll be able to get up there and, and, and cut a rug if I want to. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yes. <laughs> do the twist or whatever it is that I want to do, but it'll be a great place. <clears throat> we also have that. Uh, Renewed promise and reassurance of the one who sits on the throne, Jesus Himself. He'll be our uh, be our guide. Or he'll be our praise, our our worship. Uh, we'll be we we'll to see His face mm -hmm. uh, finally. For James, and many people have uh, have wanted to. There's been a couple people in the Scripture Moses have seen God, but you know, we'll get to see Him face to face. Just like I'm looking at you and you're looking at me, we'll be right there in our midst. Be able to talk to him, touch him, whatever we want to do. He'll be right there in our midst. It'll be one of the blessings that we'll receive when we get there. Mm -hmm. Of course, the corrupt people, as the word says here, that uh, they'll have their, their place in the lake of fire. Uh, I mean, everybody, like, most people like to swim in cool waters. But a lake of fire is not a place you want to jump in. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, they're not going to be jumping into it. They're going to be mm -hmm. placed into it. Mm -hmm. Fall into it, so to speak. It won't be a happy time. But uh, we won't be thinking about that. We'll be thinking about what's taking place in front of us. Mm -hmm. The only things on our mind. And we'll be glad of it. There's a. Uh, somebody read uh, 9 through 14. Revelation 21, 9 through 14. Yeah. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the, the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Amen. Stopped at the right one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, never, I never do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be like you yeah. it, gets, uh, it gets good to you when you start reading the Word of God. And I get yeah. lost and I'm like, what number do you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm still looking. Yeah, I have a different translation before. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, um, it, uh, you know, John's described what's going to take place. The sight's so beautiful that it, it's beyond our imagination the things are going to be there. Uh, 21. Just a, a glorious scene that's going to take place. Uh, I've got a little handout here, and I, I got time to hand out, but it's, it's, uh, the name of it doesn't really matter. And it's a story about a lady. Uh, she had a friend that wasn't saved, and she always looked for opportunities to witness to her. And she got the opportunity one time to witness to her about uh, you know, attending the church and that kind of thing, and the lady responded to her that 
She said that the, you know, she believed in God, and she didn't feel that she needed to go to church or do any other things that Christians mo mostly do that seem important to them. Because she said, if God really loves the whole world, as you know, y'all always preach to us that God loves the whole world, uh, doesn't really matter. A loving God won't send anyone won't send anyone to hell, especially if they are trying to live a good life. But we know that trying to live a good life and even living a good life is not what gets us saved. Mm -hmm. What gets us saved is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, our belief that the Lord took him and uh, God took him and He used him as a Passover lamb, that He sacrificed His life, that He He lived and He died for us, and He rose again on the third day. And because of that, the stripes that he bore, the blood that he shed, is what saves us. That and that alone is the only thing that gets us into heaven. Mm -hmm. Not our good deeds, not the money we give to the church, not the money That's we right. give to the Salvation Army. That's right. Not the good deeds that I do to help people out during the day. Or that kind of a thing. And how good a life I live, whether I'm clean, neat, rich, poor. Don't make any difference. Mm -hmm. Our belief and our faith alone is what gets us into heaven and nothing else. Right. You don't you know, have to works. go to you don't have to go to church to be a Christian, but you should want to go to church. That's right. You should want to be with other people like you. You should want mm -hmm. to you be in the house of the Lord. I mean, you know what I mean? Like we you, are an example. We are an example, but you you have to be an example in the street just as much as in here. We all are like minded. We have to be the example out there. But if we don't equip ourselves in here, we don't know what to do out there. But what, That's, but what happens if if you don't associate yourself with like-minded people, you will tend to fall back yeah. into yeah. the same trap with other, with the worldly people. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people That's think, well, if I'm a Christian, I have to do this and I have to do that. No, you should want to do that. You get to do this. You get to do that. It shouldn't be, well, you know, like a burden to you. You should want to do it. If you've got a true change in your heart, then your heart has been broken like Jesus, and, and you've been remolded to want to do that kind of stuff, not have to do it. If, you, if you're in church and you say, well, I have to go to church, well, you're in here for the wrong reason. You need to turn it around and come back again. I mean, I don't yeah, like when people right. tell me I have to go to church. Don't tell me that. You get to go to church. You get to go to church free and clear right there. And I can be somewhere else. I can tell me I don't have to spend hours and hours during the week putting the Sunday school lesson together and coming out and do it because I, the Lord called me to do it and he gave me pleasure in doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I, I enjoy doing it. So I'm here and I'm doing it every Sunday. You know, that's my ability anyway. Mm -hmm. And same thing to y'all. Y'all don't have to come to church. Y'all could be out eating breakfast, going to cry right now, sleeping in, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, You're on another kind of a road trip. Mm -hmm. Not my house. There ain't no way that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> no sleeping in with y'all. <laughs> be married to somebody else. <laughs> She's the preacher's wife. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. You gotta be a little You gotta Ain't no secrets in our life. <laughs> I love sleep. <laughs> doing good is doing good is good. Uh, the Lord expects I us to turn do that. Back on mm -hmm. yeah. But we should do it because we, uh, because we want to, not because we have to, so to speak. Uh, like people say, you know, they have to die, that Jesus. kind of thing. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it, uh, if you're filled with the uh, Holy Spirit, then you're going to be filled with the love of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the love will come out of your daily life, and all that you, uh, all that you do. And it will be evident to the world around us. If uh, the Lord reigns in our life. Thank God for the, uh, it's going to be a beautiful place. Uh, hmm. Just uh, imagine that sometimes how, how pretty it's going to look with all that stuff that's going to be there. And then, of course, you know, the people that have gone before us that we know and love, we'll see them again. And, uh, most importantly, get to see the Lord Jesus Christ and be face-to-face uh, -face with Him. Mm -hmm. And not just be studied by Him in a book or have His presence in our life to be able to, you know, see and touch. It's going to be a, a wonderful thing. That, like that song in that movie, <clears throat> I can only imagine oh, yeah. how we're going to react. <laughs> Whew, stand before the Lord. What will we do? What will we say? It'll be a day of rejoicing under that. <clears throat> Somebody read uh, Revelation 21, 15 through 27. Thank you. 
And he that talked and he that talked it with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lies four squares, and the length is as large as the bread. And he measured the city with the reed twelve thousand furlong, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass, and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all matters of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a... How do you say that word? Chalodoni. Chalodoni. Okay. Of the, yeah. the fourth and emerald. The fifth. Sadonis. 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 Mine says onyx. I'm sorry. Sadonis. The sixth. Ruby. Sad Ruby. Ruby. The seventh. Crystal light. Crystal light. The eighth burl. The ninth a topaz. The tenth a. Turquoise. Turquoise, the eleventh a Jacinth, the twelfth and Amethyst. Amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pearl gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need the sun neither of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God did light me and the lamb is the light thereof and the nation of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the king of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day for there shall be no night there and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defile it, neither whatsoever work it abominations or make it a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb Book of Life. Amen. Wow. <laughs> that, was, that was a lot. I got the, I got the, you got like the Latin terms for whatever the, the um, gemstones are. I had the real, <laughs> The, the English yeah. words. I mean, like, <laughs> I can't do. I, I, yeah. That's gonna be a beautiful place. Uh, all the stuff is going there is gonna be the colors of the rainbow will be sparkling and shining all over the place uh, mm -hmm. through the you know through the stones and all that. It'll be uh, magnificent looking, uh, more so than anything we've ever seen in our life. And you know, so there's no temple there because you know. We're the temple of the living God now. Mm -hmm. And there won't be no need for a temple because he'll, we'll all be right there together. There won't be no, you won't need no sun, you won't need no flip no switch for light because the light of the Lord will light up uh, the entire mm -hmm. entire area. Now, some people have got a glimpse, uh, got a taste of what it's like to have constant daylight. Uh, uh, over in close to the, uh, I guess, uh, the, the poles there where it's six months of daylight and six months of darkness. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine. You know, 24 7 is just daylight, daylight. That's where to be there. There will be no nighttime or no darkness. There will be a much brighter light there than it is with the sun shining here. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you'll be able to see where we'll be. We'll be, needing, we'll be needing these on or we'll be needing these in, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And uh, we'll be needing these. But it'll all be gone. It'll all be oh, good. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to see here. <laughs> <laughs> You can run up to the Lord and give him a hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, no, uh, it's gonna be a, lot, a lot of difference. It's a uh, great plan God has for us. I think anybody that's wise will pay, pay heed to it. Uh, some, people do, some people believe and some people don't. Uh, I didn't used to believe myself, but I believe now. Mm -hmm. For a variety of reasons, things that take place in my life. Uh, praying that as time goes on, each and every one of us have a, has an influence, uh, not only in here, but outside there, as Kelly was saying earlier, outside there we have an influence on other folks. That's right. And they too will come to the, the knowledge 
of believing and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation and not for the good deeds or whatever else they do in their life but for uh, faith and faith alone. It's a uh, glorious future for believers to look to. I'm going to read Revelation 22, 1 through 13. Revelation 22, 1 through 13. Okay. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. And of the Lamb, down, down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night, and they will not need the light of the lamp, nor the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophets written in the scroll. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of the scroll. Worship God. Then he told me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of the scroll. Because the time is near, let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. I will give to, give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Amen. Amen. I'm about to go on. <laughs> <laughs> That's called right, the did the commandments. <laughs> like the, uh, and they didn't have the right of life. The water's coming out, of, coming out of the throne of God. It might be of uh, Moses in the awareness when he struck the rock and water come out of the rock. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And it would be, uh, to give them life. And you know, Jesus is our rock. He's the rock of ages. Mm -hmm. and so the water's going to come out of his throne and we'll, uh, we'll all feed off of it. Live, uh, live forever and ever by the water and the fruit that it bears and that kind of thing. It's uh, life-giving water. You know, you know, we have to have water to live physically on earth. We also have to have, in a sense, water uh, spiritually. Not necessarily uh, liquid water we're talking about, but the, uh, it talks about in the scripture where how rivers of living water will come out of somebody's mouth. Somebody that's anointed and appointed. Mm -hmm. And that uh, water that he's talking about, as, as Jesus told the lady at the well, the water that he offers to give is well, water that will last forever and she'll never thirst again. Mm -hmm. And we continue to drink of the water <clears throat> that comes out of the, the pastor's mouth or the preacher's mouth or the teacher's mouth or out of the word of God or whoever's speaking the truth in the word. That will give us life. That will give us that water that we need, the spiritual water to keep us strong and keep us alive. And my brother was saying that you don't hang around the right type of people. You hang around the, the wrong type of people. The water that comes out of them will influence you mm -hmm. to turn away from the Lord. It can be, a, it can be the water of death, so to speak, not the water of life. It's important that we do so. And even the scripture tells us to forsake not a something of ourselves together. As some are, because we know, and he knows, everybody knows, that uh, what you hang around, mostly what you put into you is what's going to come out of you eventually. So if we're constantly coming, hanging around uh, like brother with the same mindset, and all that just keeps going around and around and around inside of us and inside of them, that's what will come out of it when, the, uh, it, you know, when it needs to be. It won't be a bad thing, it'll be a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we will not like the uh, man who built his house on sinking sand. We built our house on the rock. Mm -hmm. And when the rock, when the winds come and the storms come and that kind of thing takes place, we'll still be standing. Whereas other things will not be. Things will change. One thing for sure, this word will never change. I will never stop believing that the only way of salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what anybody else says, or what anybody else teaches, I've learned, I've felt, I've experienced, I know. 
Now, there's other people who have theories about how to get to heaven and how to do this, good deeds, or whatever it is. And them things will change, just like the, uh, the theory of evolution. It has changed the attitude, taken away, and that kind of a thing over a period of years. But what we believe with all of our heart and all of our mind will never change. It was that way from the day I got saved, you know, it would be, be that way until the day I died. It would never change. Somebody could take the, all the Bibles in the world and get rid of them and rewrite them to their own satisfaction. But I've got that word in my heart. Mm -hmm. I don't change that. It's in here and it's in here. What I've read, what I've experienced in life, and what I know will stick with me all of my days. And you likewise. Amen. Nobody can change that. It's never going to change. It'll be the same. Mm -hmm. Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It will never change in our lives. Yes. We always believe the truth and what we believe. And stick with us. Now it says that he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous uh, still. The Word also tells us that we should all seek the Lord while, he, while we are able, while He is available. Mm -hmm. When the time comes to seek Him. And I know some people in the world that think, well, I'm young and I'm just going to go live my life, you know, do my own thing, and when I get old and decrepit or whatever, you know, then I'll seek the Lord because then I need Him. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'll need Him. Uh, but the Word says that that's not going to happen. When the opportunity arises and you get a chance to be saved, get saved. Don't put it off and put it off and put it off and wait till you get old and decrepit mm -hmm. or whatever because the Word says here that let the unjust be unjust still. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change. But you, you live that way all your life. Later on in life, you're not going to want to change. Mm -hmm. The word says you treat a child the way they should go. When they get old, they want to depart from it. A person that is raised up in corruption and unrighteousness, unless the Lord changes them, they'll be that way until the day they die. When they get older, they'll just be in, their, they'll be in them. They have to come to the Lord in repentance and turn to Him. And things will change in our life if we so want it to. Mm -hmm. If not, it won't. It'll just be that way forever and ever. <clears throat> I accepted the, uh, Christ when I was 11 years old. I'll never forget that walking down that aisle. I was <laughs> uh, with the Masses Mill Presbyterian Church. And that feeling is still there, and I, I love it. <laughs> and I live it. <laughs> The next thing I just want to say, I'm going to do it quickly here. That, uh, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. And I forgot to bring the bell. We're uh, a little behind schedule here, but... Where it tells us not to, not to change the scripture. You take it for what it is. You read it, you study it, you understand it, you learn it, and you live it. And don't try to change it and make your own Bible like so many have done and start their own denomination, or their own religion, their own creed, or whatever it is. You take the Word of God and you, you believe it, and you apply it to your life, and you live by it. And don't try to change it. Accept it whether you like it or whether you don't like it. You accept it by faith, believe it, and the Lord will bless it with calling it. I appreciate y'all coming. And anybody out there listening on social media there, we'd love to have y'all here next Sunday. Uh, be a part of what's going on. Bring your opinions. Bring your questions. Uh, and uh, we'll be glad to have you. Uh, we'd like to close this out in prayer. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your blessings on our lives, Father, knowing that all good things come from above. For all the good that we're becoming to be, Father, we thank you and praise you for here this morning. Thank you for your word, Lord, that we can apply it to our lives in such a way that we understand it and that we live it out. And we be example to the world around us. And we thank you for the every opportunity and every ability that you give us. Be with us in the next service. Help us receive what you would have us receive. Help us walk out these doors a little differently than what we walked in. A little closer to you and look closer to each other, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That last verse, the 21st, is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay.